in terms of queuing in the lane. In terms of pedestrian safety from, from the nearby schools, uh, in particular the Church High School to the west of, of Junction 3, uh, we have considered the proximity of the high school. Uh, it, is, it is full policy that pupils remain on site all day. However, we understand that they could choose to visit after the end of the school day. Uh, a review of the route shows that there is no clear line of sight of the developments, nor any footways to facilitate or encourage pedestrians across the road to Junction. The footbridge offers a more straightforward route as opposed to negotiating the various cross verges and um, embankments and carriageway. Um, signage would also be provided on the guard railing where the southern tip of the New Hay Road meets the eastbound Mount by the Slip Road to ensure pedestrians are aware of the correct route to uh, cross the M53. Since the, the previous application uh, that was refused, the local infrastructure has been improved uh, in the area, including the link to cycle <coughs> on Princeton Way to and from Woodchurch Road by Early Drive, which allows a connection to the, the Woodchurch Road footbridge to the west uh, or to continue to the east. Initially, we did have concerns over the safety of pedestrians and cyclists crossing Princeton Way, accessing the development, notably the, the risks of uh, pedestrian cycle collisions and potential discouragement of travel to the site by sustainable modes. And in response to that, the, the Section 278 agreement to include for the provision of a controlled tube and crossing facility with a 2.5 metre wide refuge to accommodate cyclists and high friction surfacing is, is proposed. Uh, the foot, footway on the western side of Brenton Way at the north side of the junction will also be converted to a shared pedestrian cycle footway. Uh, and as Matthew indicated earlier, the, the design of the pedestrian facilities uh, has gone through the required process with regards to safety auditing and that has been uh, found acceptable. Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, regarding um, the vehicle movements and their quality and their co contribution, um, unfortunately, I can't answer to for the CO2, it's not something we monitor. Um, the, the one that we do monitor is NOx, so we have 20 plus diffusion tubes around the world uh, that uh, we've had for a number of years that give background levels and they contribute to whether you would need to declare an air quality management area or not. The, uh, the current average um, annual mean that would require um, action to be taken is 40 micrograms per cubic metre. Um, Looking at our data from um, our nearest ones that we've got to that particular site, we have two actually on Wood Church Road, around about the area where the, the speed camera is, if that means anything to anyone. Um, and also, uh, coming from the other direction, we have one uh, opposite the Arab Park Hotel at the, the busy junction from um, Arab Park Hospital, etc. Um, those um, tubes there are showing uh, levels of 26, 20, 28 to 25 micrograms per cubic metre, which is, is well below the 40 um, level that is suggested. The other thing that we've also done is um, uh, these measurements are taken either curbside or roadside. Um, there is also a tool that you can use which uh, um, indicates fall off of levels um, from the, the actual measurement to what's called the nearest receptor, which is generally considered to be a, a, a domestic dwelling. Um, measurements from the, the plans show that um, the, the nearest dwellings are only 40 metres away. Um, putting information into the, um, into the tool, even if we were talking about 40 micrograms per cubic metre at the McDonald's itself from the traffic that was there, uh, the distance drop off would mean it would drop to 20 micrograms per cubic metre, less than what's in the surrounding. Thank you for that. Open to members, questions, comments, etc. Thank you, Chair. Staying with the level of traffic, I'm particularly concerned about the pollution that will be emitted, particularly from diesel vehicles. There have been a, a number of studies now published in the Lancet which show quite clearly that the development of children's lungs is restricted when they are exposed to excess levels of CO2. And this has been going on for over 15 years, these studies. They've shown higher levels of childhood asthma, and I think we're putting more children at more risk. They're the ones at risk, because they're the ones at short. Um, yeah, Ross, you 
is a, a difficult application and, and I do wish sometimes the planning committee had the remit, the public believe it has, it, it has. We are not the model judges of McDonald's, that's not the job of a, of a planning committee. Although we do have concerns about healthy eating, pollution and, and all that, those issues. And I think it, it, it's right and proper that we need to start talking about how we change the way we live given that we're entering the era where we talk about climate crisis and climate emergency. And I think we do need to start that. But at the moment, I have to say, um, we don't have the policies or the tools on this planning committee to actually back that up. And I'd be interested if there is a reason for refusal, what they are. So at the moment, we have to consider what are the material considerations. One of the most material considerations is that this land is designated for industrial use. And this moves outside that industrial use. However, we can only look next door to the gym, which isn't designated industrial use, but is employs people, is popular and used. Um, I'm not the judge whether McDonald's next to the gym is, is a right moral message, but it's 15 to the week. Um, also, across the road, we're, uh, I'm familiar with this, the business, the Thai supermarkets, and we have retail outlets on there already. And across the board, if you look at the craft industrial area and so on and so forth, we have given permission of this planning committee for non industrial uses to make use of the land. And, and the test is that has an, has an industrial user come on this land for a considerable period of time? The answer is no. The other material issue, obviously, of course, is the traffic volume and, and the ability for the site to cope with the traffic. So I look at where the McDonald's sites are in and around the border. And you have the Croft uh, area, from has been mentioned. You have the one outside Camelot on the busiest on the road, which is the A41. They all seem to cope. The one at Sainsbury's seems to cope um, with the traffic. And it would be, I think, very difficult to prove again whether this site, given the evidence given from the, the highways officers, that this site could not deal with the, with the model issues are right or wrong, whether this site can or cannot safely deal with the, the visitations it will have. But it does, seem, it does seem that some of our policies laugh at each other. We've just moved that, um, and, uh, a fine for people who are idle in their vehicles and, and uh, diesel emissions while they're idling, yet we have an application for the driving, which by its nature will be, you will be queuing for the driving and idling, idling in traffic. So, they, they, we are in serious need of a, a policy around climate emergency, policies that back up what public wants to do, policies that back up the change of lifestyle. But I have to say, it's going to be very difficult with the wherewithal and the studies that have been carried out to defend a reason for refusal against this application. And that's where we would be heading, I think. It's quite clear that a lot of investment have gone into the plans already. We will be going to an appeal situation, and I think I'll be interested to hear what the material uh, reasons for refusal are. And if we don't stack up, then I think we are in a difficult situation. I think that's helpful to you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks very much, Chair. Um, so I'd just like to make a few comments based on what we've heard so far, and particularly, you know, with regard to material considerations and don't entirely share the view that we've, we've just heard. I think in terms of the, the obvious um, material consideration, which is the deviation from use as laid down in the UTP, um, I think that's clear and that's recognised in the, in the officer's report. Um, it's also fair to say, as has just been pointed out, there are other uses already on the site. I think my comment with respect to that is that this is a very different type of use. Um, you know, uh, very uh, with a 24-hour McDonald's, um, I think it's reasonable to say that those are two very, very different uses, and those will have very different impacts on the on the nature of the actual trading estate itself. So I think that is a material consideration. I accept. There are issues around it, but it's fair to point out that on page 23 of the report, with respect to the sequential test, 
Um, it does point out, the officer does point out, although the sequential assessment from the applicant is deficient in some respects, so the report itself does already acknowledge that there are issues uh, around, uh, around that. So I think that's one matter. Um, I think picking up on some of the issues that have been raised during the, the um, debate so far, uh, one is obviously healthy eating, and I think, you know, we, we don't need to, uh, I don't really need to expand what's already been said in terms of healthy eating. I would just say that I did, I did consult the, the Director for Health and Wellbeing, and her advice was, and I'll just read it out, I think it's worth listening to, she says, we are working with planning officers to develop the evidence base in this area, and are recommending that controls on all food takeaways in areas of over-concentration and close to educational establishments through planning policy CS27 be proposed for adoption in the emerging local plan. So I think that's, you know, that's worth pointing out. Now, our policies aren't robust enough, uh, that's for sure. Uh, hopefully they will become more robust in due course, but our local plan is emerging, and I suppose it's a reasonable question to ask at what stage does the kind of advice that we're getting, which presumably councillors would be sympathetic towards, you know, become a material consideration. Uh, secondly, in terms of the air quality issue, and again, you know, I've, I've listened to what environmental health have got to say on that, and I accept that under the guidelines we are given, um, the, the report is, is reasonable within those guidelines. I think Mary's already pointed out a very valid point that, you know, the, the latest kind of evidence we read uh, and hear about uh, is extremely worrying and concerning uh, with respect to the impact that poor air quality is having. And I think my kind of comment with respect to that is that I don't think national, never mind local policies, are up to speed on what the, the kind of medical evidence is telling us. And I think we just need to bear that in mind. I think it's quite a reasonable thing to take into account that all of the evidence we're being presented with shows how damaging poor air quality is. Uh, and therefore, you know, we should be cognizant of that. Um, another factor would be uh, the, whole, the whole issue of CO2 emissions, which again is, is very, very topical, shall we say. And, you know, if we're thinking about what the applicant said, this is a 20-year facility, he was quite keen to emphasise how long they're going to stick around, which I'm sure is positive from his point of view. But from a climate crisis point of view, you know, a 20-year facility built around um, uh, traffic movements uh, to the scale that we have been hearing about is taking us in exactly the opposite direction, obviously, uh, compared to the direction we want to go. And just to quote, and I think this is, I would regard, uh, highly significant, if you look at Wirral's climate change strategy, uh, it's replete with um, advice and uh, guidance on why a facility like this would uh, be absolutely taking us in the wrong direction. But specifically to quote from page 16 <coughs> of the strategy, it says that uh, the strategy indicates a need to promote land use patterns and technologies that reduce the need for motorised travel, support <coughs> local food production and consumption, and limit waste to landfill. Okay, so that's very, very clear. So, you know, if we think about like that international advice around climate change, we've got 11 years to really come to terms with this. Well, here we're talking about a 20 year facility that's going to be contributing negatively to the problem uh, over the coming decades and beyond the problem. So, the only other point I want to make was something that came up in Matthew's comments around jobs. Fair enough, we take into account the jobs created, but as the, the petitioner pointed out, there's going to be knock on effects uh, on local jobs, and I think we need to take that into account as well. That, uh, that there are there is a negative side to that equation as well. So I think you know when you put, look at the whole picture put together, and you look at what's in the national planning policy framework, on top of the fact that this is a clear deviation from the unitary development plan, I feel we have ample case uh, to to reject this application. And I've got work <coughs> here uh, to that effect. I'll be happy to move that in due course when the rest of the committee are finished their deliberations.
move on um, to the top of the list because the increase in traffic for the four hours a day, including delivery vehicles during the early hours of the morning. Um, this is a 24 hour operation and um, could we not put um, a restriction on that? Because as far as I'm aware, the, uh, the McDonald's in Compton doesn't open for 24 hours a day. I think it closes at 2 in the morning and opens again at 6 or something. Um, if, if there are concerns around the volume of traffic for the 24 hours, is it something we could look at? Is the applicants are applied for 24 hours, um, and um, uh, based on our our assessment of the application, um, we don't have any issue with it being 24 hours. Um, there's no issue. Yeah. Yeah. There's no issue with it in terms of highways, um, and in terms of the relationship with, with the nearest property, which is over 50 metres away. Uh, and okay. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, as Councillor Powell said, this is very difficult. I went on a site visit in February and I've read all the documentation, I've listened carefully, carefully to everything everybody said tonight. But my problem as a member of this planning committee, many of the objections that I'm hearing tonight uh, don't appear to be planning reasons and I don't think they would stand up if it went to appeal. I mean if you just look at some of the arguments put forward about diet and I'm sure we'd all agree we want society growing up where people do have a good diet, they look after themselves, etc. But as I understand it, we could not refuse this application tonight on the grounds that we ourselves don't think that McDonald's provide a nutritious diet to people who choose choose to go and to go and eat there. And things like antisocial behaviour has been mentioned, but again, I'm not clear how, if this application was approved, that in itself would automatically mean that there'd be an increase in crime or antisocial behaviour in that area. I don't think it's objective, I don't think it's objective on those grounds, again, would stand up, would stand up for it on the scrutiny. And again, another argument is, well, why do we need another McDonald's here? We've got other McDonald's all over the world. Again, as I understand it, as a planning committee, that in itself is not a reason for refusing an application on the grounds, well, there's another McDonald's three miles away or four miles away or five miles away. So we've got to be get very careful in, the, in, in what we choose tonight. On things like zero hours contracts and trade union rights, well, I mean, I'm very proud to say I'm a lifelong trade unionist and I would like to see everybody belong to a trade union because I think trade unions do represent people in a way. But again, my problem is, my problem is, as a member of this planning committee, I can't really take that into account on this application because it's not our job as a planning committee to change society and to say that everybody should be a member of a, a trade union or nobody should be employed on zero hours contracts. Everybody should be on a living wage, etc. So that's that's the problem uh, I've got. I mean, even on things like I think Councillor Cleary said that we should be reducing motorised travel. Well, a lot of us might have an aspiration for that, and we might all want to encourage more people to take public transport, etc. But again, as I see it, that doesn't give us a justifiable reason tonight for refusing an application because we might think that there's too many cars uh, in the world. So my problem, Chair is that there's no objections, as I see it, from, from important players in this, such as the, the highways people, environmental help, Merseyside fire and rescue people, etc. Uh, and on the question of jobs, when people have said, oh, jobs are going to be lost in the area, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced by that argument, because I would have thought that if a McDonald's or whatever is opening up, jobs will be created. Some of them may be zero hours, but overall, I would have thought some jobs uh, would be created. And my concern is if we reject this application tonight, and I've been on this committee before when we've gone down this road, where we've rejected applications and we've all gone out the room, and then sometime down the road, whoever's put the application in has appealed, won the appeal, so the, so the application brought in, and this um, 
council then is left open to possible you know, accusations and, and uh, having to pay fees, etc. So that is a consideration that we can't just ignore. And I think another important thing here is, I think it's been stated tonight, this land has been vacant for about 20 years. So it's not as if somebody can say, well actually there's a much better application here that would be much better than a McDonald's. Let's put that on the ground. If it's been left out idle for 20 years, then it's inevitable that people like McDonald's are going to look at it and want to submit it, an application. So my fear, Chair, and I do have a lot of sympathy with what people are saying about how we need to improve things and, and change society. <laughs> but, but they're not sound planning reasons. And I've always been told on this planning committee that you can only reject an application on sound planning grounds. And I'm not convinced we've got them. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. A couple of questions for most officers. Um, in the preamble to the report, there's an application or reference to an application made 17 years ago for a McDonald's restaurant, and that was refused. Do we know why it was refused? back in 2002 was refused on the basis of um, uh, highways concerns and particularly the interaction with um, cyclists and pedestrians. I, uh, I suspect that may be the answer so that would be quite nice to answer the next question to the uh, highways officers. Um, first thing I say that I uh, very much welcome your innovation of allowing the committee to question applicants and objectors. And my question to the applicants or their agents uh, when I asked about the number of uh, vehicle uh, movements as a result of this application, I was surprised that the applicant's agents couldn't tell us how many because 3.71 of the report states that the applicant submitted a transport assessment in support of the application which calculates the likely vehicle movements associated with the development of this scale based on a nationally recognised database. The, the applicant has used count data and customer interview survey data from comparable McDonald's restaurants. The assessment provided by the applicant has been considered in detail by the council's highways engineers. Now, if the applicant, for whatever reason, can't tell us what figures were in that assessment, can the highways officer or the planning officer please tell me how many vehicle movements are expected if this application is approved, please? For you, Chair. Thank you. Um, so, the peak hours have been determined through the um, data collection um, that we've undertaken. So, in the, in the weekday, the, in the AM peak hour, uh, there will be 102 vehicles in and 103 vehicles out. And then in the evening peak hour, there will be 116 vehicles in and 117 vehicles out. And as the, uh, the applicant referred to on the Saturday, the, the lunchtime peak hour, there will be 128 vehicles in and 135 vehicles in. And final point then, Chair. If the application was refused, a single story application for McDonald's was refused 17 years ago because of traffic concerns, then a two story application <coughs> 17 years later will <coughs> have higher traffic volumes than the one we refused 17 years ago. As an observation. <coughs>
sentences, just write some words for this, maybe this one from words away. And, and uh, when you think about it, you know, a uh, lottery leaves, leaves Dublin, or Belfast, you know, comes off 12 keys. There's no, there's a doubt of the service station, there's a new service areas, you know, between uh, we're all uh, 15 years old, you know, when we get them down in 56, I mean, they are to the, you know, to the lost coast road, it's quite, you know, quite a fair. So, so my fear is, is that this is going to attract, you know, traffic in particular, you know, traffic that says, but it's going to the docks. And uh, because you can always speak to, you know, like that, there's a lot of evidence that there's a doubt of, you know, facilitating these, um, you know, with, with this situation and with the world in particular. Um, and I think, you know, so our peak hours, I think, I think you probably equate what all the peak hours is, you know, when the, when, when the, the ferries are, you know, not coming in the departure. You know, you know, looking at the site plan, there's absolutely no provision for HCB parking. And you know, to me that's a, a bit of a huge concern, because the even on Duke Street, you know, the ABC Duke Street being used now as a, you know, parking area for HCBs, you know, the time, you know, when, when HCB drivers may be away from home, you know, for days and end, you know, all the summer trees. Pat, you've indicated that you had some words that you might like to share. Yeah, I did indeed. Thanks, Chair. I think, you know, uh, the last two contributions have been very relevant. And just to kind of emphasize the point that you know, those kind of traffic movements, uh, what Stuart has just pointed out in terms of the material impact on the character of the industrial estate as it is now, it's a very big change in, in the character of the, uh, of the area. So uh, my specific wording, which I've taken guidance from officers on in terms of what they feel uh, might be defendable on appeal if it ever came to that. So the wording is as follows. Uh, the local planning authority considers there is insufficient information to demonstrate there is no reasonable prospect of the site being used for its designated purposes in the statutory development plan. Proposed development would also be detrimental to the immunity and character of the area and would set an undesirable precedent that could undermine future sustainable economic activity within the primarily industrial area, contrary to policy EM8 in the Unitary Development Plan, policy CS17 in the proposed submission draft core strategy, and the National Planning Policy Framework in particular having regard to chapters 6 and 11. And furthermore, the local planning authority considers that the proposal would result in unsustainable development by virtue of its design and location, contrary to chapter 12 of the National Planning Policy Framework.
think in terms of uh, highways and traffic movements, Councillor Lewis referred to the reasons for refusal last time, which may be material in their own rights. Um, but we are advised uh, that there have been sufficient changes in the, um, in the layouts of the, uh, the local traffic network and the proposals for the two crossing and the pre existing now cycle facilities in the area have, uh, have, have overtaken, if you like, the, um, the, the reasons for refusal uh, in the past. So, that has a uh, motion that's been duly seconded. Are any members wish to comment further on, on what that's um, said? No, 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 no. Uh, only to be reiterated, we've been in this situation before on some large applications. Uh, the, the movement <coughs> would be, uh, you know, just to make it quite clear that the if this goes to be, it might be um, full blown appeal, I don't know what type of appeal, but the, the, the mover would be expected to represent the council. Um, the officers have a difficulty because they've already recommended approval and um, they would have a difficulty uh, representing that position. Um, I just you know, want to protect the council from any ongoing sort of issues around them. And I know when you ask for reasons for refusal. The officers do their very best to support members uh, and that's what they've done. So I uh, just just you know just make it quite clear that when this thing proceeds forward that there may be another stage and I hope members of the public realise that the applicant has a second go at this and that there could possibly be a fair just just to raise that point just in that yeah, I mean clearly it is a departure uh, but the balance the committee will need to make is whether, you know, to allow that departure to take place, given the evidence that we have in front of us about the potential use of the site for its, its allocated use, which is industrial, and for the last 20 odd years, it's web marketing, uh, no use has come forward, um, and there are other uses on the site, not least the gym next door and others, um, which we refer to during the debate, which are also a departure which any uh, inspector would would see was the case and wonder why um, we are not prepared to allow a departure in this particular case. Um, but uh, that's now a matter for members to balance those considerations into the words. Okay, so we have um, a, um, a motion for refusal on the table. Uh, moved and seconded. Can I see those in favour of, uh, of that um, proposal? Oh, 
five past an hour. He said I'm a bit vague, this chap. Okay. 